Welcome back. We continue our conversation on the impact of divorce with a look at how it affects children, specifically the wounds adult children of divorce carry. According to some estimates, 50% of children born into married families today will witness their parents' divorce. The effects can last for decades. Varying studies show adult children of divorce are more likely to have difficulty maintaining close relationships, have lower oxytocin levels, have a higher risk of smoking, and face a greater risk of divorce themselves, just to name a few. Healing is difficult, but it's not impossible for adult children of divorce. One ministry specializes in helping them find support and resources for overcoming this pain from within the church. Dan Miola, the co-founder of Life Giving Wounds, and Father John Paul of the Franciscan Missionaries of the Eternal Word and Chaplain for EWTN, join me now to talk about this, the importance of this ministry. Thank you so much for joining me, gentlemen. Dan, what are the first steps toward healing when adult children of divorce have carried these scars for so long? Yeah, I'd really take Paul's admonition to anybody who's facing suffering to grieve with hope, 1 Thessalonians 4.13. So there's a lot of adult children of divorce who wonder if they have any wounds because their wounds have been minimized, ignored, or silenced for all sorts of reasons. So just to offer them to have the permission to grieve and explore that this may in fact be a wound. And to those who already know that they're wounded, but maybe are facing kind of a resonation that there's no hope for healing, is to have hope and to invite Christ into this pain. That's beautiful. Father John Paul, as a priest, what advice can you offer those seeking consolation through prayer? Well, prayer is the most important thing, Monsi. And I would say that every one of us has a story. Every one of us has a very unique story and our own in individual experience of what we may have gone through with our own parents' divorce. And like you said, to be very sensitive with that, but also to face it in reality, to bring it to the Lord in prayer and know that God's story, his own story of salvation must intersect with our story. So bringing our brokenness, our wounds to the story of salvation, and really in all honesty, bringing our, our hurts, our pains, um, our wounds to the wounds of Jesus, because his wounds are fresh wounds. His wounds are resurrected wounds. And that's really the method in prayer is bringing our humanity and our brokenness to Jesus' own humanity and his wounds that are in eternity forever open for us. For us to enter into them, that's beautiful. Dan, what does peer support look like in this ministry? I know a lot of people, they're hesitant to even talk about divorce. They're worried about hurting other people, hurting their parents. Uh, what does it look like to, to do this in community? Yeah, I mean, I, I, we can't do this healing work alone, as Father Jean-Paul Mary just mentioned about inviting Christ, but Christ also wants to incarnate his presence in a community. And we know the surest way to healing and virtues through friendship. So the peer support we offer in our ministries through small group discussion, through advice from others who know the pain from the inside, who know the path of healing from the inside. So we try to provide these encounters and ultimately we hope friendships with other people who are similarly wounded so we can heal together. We just have seen the fruits of this again and again, the importance of the uniqueness of peer support for this wound. So that's kind of what it looks like, whether that be in retreats or support groups, et cetera. Father John Paul, we know that the Holy Father talked about a lot of uh, marriages not being valid, and he also made the annulment process easier. What does the church need to do in response to divorce? Everything, everything possible. Um, just from the very beginning of family life, um, the way we're raised, uh, the way we are taught the faith, the way we're taught to communicate with one another, openness in, in marriage, love. I think it's so important that it begin very early. And also, not just marriage preparation. Marriage preparation is very important, but also accompanying married couples probably within the first years of marriage, 5, 10, 15 years of marriage, to have other couples along the road with you. You can't do it alone. Just like in religious life and priesthood, you can't do it alone. Married couples need examples in those early years, the years where they might struggle with different things. 
to help them through those things, to make to make really divorce unthinkable. Absolutely. Dan, we know adult children of divorce can view marriage with a skeptical eye. How do you overcome that and approach this sacrament with an open heart? Um, first, just to dovetail on the last question is, we really need to listen to the stories of adult children of divorce. We need to hear their voice and really truly get to know this group intimately, to know their struggles with marriage, their fears. Um, I, I feel like so often um, the church misses this voice. So first of all, just listening to what are their challenges so we can respond effectively in pastoral ministry to help them move towards a vocation to marriage. And also I might say uh, consecrated life and priesthood. They struggle with a skeptical eye towards all these vocations. So first of all, just listening more to their voice and responding to their particular pain. Second of all, they need to recover an adequate view of marriage. We often have a damaged view of marriage from our experiences of a broken home, and the church offers a beautiful blueprint for that. And then lastly, to also be aware, grown awareness of the wounds and the ways and effects that negatively impacts relationships with uh, relationship harming behaviors, some of which we're often not even aware of. And for this, we also need help with mentors of other adult children divorce who have been there, who have struggled similarly, but can offer hope that yes, you can have a great marriage too, even if you come from a broken home, and to learn how to do that. It takes work, it takes effort, but with God's grace, anything is possible, and many of us do go on have beautiful marriages, but we need to cooperate with God's grace, recovering the blueprint, listening to the voices of other adult children divorce, having specific pastoral ministry for them and their fears, and then offering some mentor couples. Father John Paul, listening to that, all of the things that the church can do and needs to do, is it also about restoring the relationship between the individual and Jesus Christ and, and fostering that first? Yeah, I would, that's a great question, Monsia, because Jesus Christ is the bridegroom and the church is his spouse. And so, like, marriage is that imagery here on earth, that foreshadowing of the imagery between Jesus Christ and his church. And that image between G Jesus Christ and his church is indestructible. You can't break that bond. So like marriage, when we enter into marriage for, for those who are married and also for those of us who take vows in religious life, we're to live our life based on Jesus' relationship with his church, which is a total gift of self offering everything back to God. It's a very, very different way of looking at relationships. I know with this culture, um, it's, it can be a challenge. So I'm grateful to both of you for this ministry and for your personal testimonies. Thank you. Thank you, Monty, for your opportunity. Thank you. If you or someone you know would like to learn more about this ministry, visit lifegivingwounds.org.